my hot news, everybody. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that happened this week in today's episode of This Week in News, where we could cover the big deals that happened over the course of the week. So let's get into it. <laughs> start talking about how AMD is fixing their laggy CPUs because it's been reported that AMD CPUs have some lag spikes of one to two seconds when they're running on Windows 10 or Windows 11 if you have FTPM enabled, which is something that you have to have enabled if you're trying to run Windows 11 because it's required for Windows 11 to operate. AMD has been saying that the way you get around this is by just having a hardware TPM key, but finally, they're gonna be rolling out a BIOS update for this in May of 2022 where you could actually fix it on the back end instead of having to spend money and to get AMD CPUs to work properly. This is probably one of the reasons why you don't want to switch over to Windows 11 right now because you'd be forced to do that or to spend extra money that you don't necessarily have. But in case you want to spend a lot of money on the 5800 X3D, well, AMD is allegedly going to be releasing that on April 20th for $449. We also got pricing of the other CPUs we're expecting to launch at that date. The 5700X at 299, the 5600 at 199, the 5500 at 159 with a couple of other lower end SKUs launching at that same time as well. We're also anticipating that the 6X50 refresh of the Navi RDNA 2 GPUs is gonna happen at that same date, but we're also expecting that the 5800X3D will not have any overclocking whatsoever. That's according to the latest reports. Motherboard manufacturers are being asked to remove overclocking functionality from the BIOS if the 5800X3D is installed. This is likely a limitation that's being brought on by the fact that the 3D vCache is removing that functionality, so in case you like to do extreme overclocking, maybe the 5800X3D is not for you. But what could be for you is all of the GPUs. For the first time in 24 years, it looks like three GPU companies are launching GPUs. We've got Intel coming up sometime in May, Nvidia is launching a card on March 29th, and then AMD is coming up with a refresh on April 20th, 3090 Ti on the 29th, Intel Vision event being announced for May 10th through 11th, and that's when we're anticipating Intel's GPUs will be dropping, as well as the model list leak coming out about the Intel Arc Alchemist GPUs from the A370M all the way to the A380, and then the Iris Z Max A200M GPU. It looks like Intel's gonna have GPUs that are ranged the gamut from low-end integrated on a laptop to all the way high-end discrete that are that's gonna be able to compete with the 3070 Ti, allegedly. And we also have alleged reports of GPU prices falling because it's been reported by many retailers as well as aggregating data that's coming out of eBay that GPU prices are falling and that some GPUs are cheaper than they have ever been. According to the German retailer aggregation, the RX 6000 series of GPUs are only 135% over MSRP, which is less than they initially launched for at 142% over MSRP. And Nvidia GPUs also declining to 141% over MSRP, but the lowest they've ever been was 134. But regardless whether or not you live in Europe or the United States, it looks like GPU prices are dropping. I don't really know for the rest of the world, but for the data that we've been able to see, it does look like prices are coming down. What's also coming down is a lot of malware. Companies are feeling sick with the viruses. Samsung getting hacked by Lapsus, who is the same company that ended up hacking Nvidia. Roughly 200 gigabytes of compressed data being taken from Samsung that includes things like security vulnerabilities, including Knox authentication codes, biometric unlock algorithms, the bootloader code, the trusted applet source code, and then the code behind the online services and Samsung accounts. So essentially everything that Samsung devices do to keep you safe has been uh, taken in this data breach, which is not quite good. It hasn't really been a ton of de public development on this, whether or not Samsung is working with these hackers to get all of that taken back, whether or not they're meeting the demands. And in last week's hot news, we talked about how Nvidia was hacked by this company and they had until last Friday to meet the demands. That really hasn't, there hasn't been a lot of public development on that either, but we did find out that 71,000 employees had their credentials leaked because of this hack and that's because of the hack. New malware is coming out where there's some driver signing certifications that are out there that are making it so that NVIDIA drivers might actually install malware on your computer. Not if you download from the official NVIDIA website, but in case you find it from a shady source, it might do shady things to the shady side of your computer. That's essentially what's going down there. And Linux also has some security vulnerabilities. Some of the worst that it's been seen in years. Dirty Pipe, the newest vulnerability being disclosed, having things like being 
being able to add an SSH key to the root user's account and doing a whole bunch of other shady things that are no good for Linux. But what's good for the tech industry is Apple getting really competitive with their SOCs. The M1 Ultra getting announced at Apple's peak performance event that took place on March 8th. The M1 Ultra is gonna have all of the things that you come to love and know of the M1 Max, but then essentially doubling it. You want a 20 core CPU, you can get that. You want a 64 core GPU, you can get that. 128 gigabytes of unified memory, you can get that as well. 2.5 terabytes per second of interprocessor bandwidth, as well as 800 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. This SOC looks to be a huge competitor. There's been leaked benchmarks of this where in single core it performs on par with the latest stuff that's out from Intel and AMD. And then in multi-core it's competing with a 32 core Threadripper 3970X, which is just absolutely bananas. And it's gonna be put into the Apple Mac Studio, which is just a thonky Mac mini coming in at 1999 for the M1 Max version, but then 3099 for the M1 Ultra version. 3999, I don't know if I said the numbers correctly. Apple also announcing the 27 inch 5K studio display. It's not that great, especially at $1,600. It's spec list is kind of underwhelming. It just, it feels like Apple wanted to have to release this and it's it's not worth releasing and you probably shouldn't buy it. And you shouldn't trust on From Software fixing their games anytime soon. Elden Ring getting fixed by Valve first to run smoothly on the Steam Deck. It looks like the best way to play Elden Ring on the PC right now with no lagging or stuttering is gonna be on just a handheld portable PC. Valve also releasing drivers that are necessary in order to run Windows on the Steam Deck with them releasing the Bluetooth graphics and Wi-Fi drivers, but not the audio driver as of yet. So you have to use USB-C or Bluetooth headset in order to get that to work. But it does look like Valve is making good on their promise of making sure that the Steam Deck can do anything that a regular PC can do. And Google is trying to get that to happen for Stadia. It'd be coming announced this week that Stadia might have ways of running Windows games directly so that they could open up their library and stream Windows games to everybody across the internet, which would make Stadia worth it? Which is just, that's an odd statement I did not expect to say here in 2022. Another one that I did not expect to say is that LimeWire is coming back. It's been announced that LimeWire is now an NFT marketplace for NFT noobs, and they're expecting to launch their marketplace in May of 2022, in case you want to get in on the NFT craze with the beloved pirating software that you used to grow up with. And speaking of pirating things, it turns out that Chinese OEM companies are pirating RTX 3060 laptop G GPUs and then stuffing them into desktop GPUs and then selling them for like $540 a pop. There you go. That's it's, it's for mining because they mine better. Of course, that's why they would do it. It's so that they can make more money. Mining is the way of the future, my friends. NFTs are the way of the future. I'll see you in the future on Monday for more hot news.